Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. And by the way, I am still working on this Planet X uh, video that we'll be doing on our news, an investigative report, in fact. And those of you, though, that may be sitting on the edge of your seat because there's much report about this thing appearing in March 26 of 2016, keep in mind there is, uh, or there was, I should say, he died a number of years back, I believe it was in 1999, uh, and a Chilean astronomer who also calculated and followed this, as he called it, a comet planet for 40 years. Uh, it does have three different speeds that it travels at, so it makes it nearly impossible to get an accurate time of when the uh, Planet X would actually pass by. I do believe, though, however, it is uh, clearly uh, a judgment sign of God. It's spoken of in Revelation, and I'll be bringing out a new verse for you as well. Don't want to mention it as of yet, saving it for this investigative work we've been doing. Uh, but another reason why we see people like Bob Fletcher who mentions that it could come by in 2015, 2016, 2017, it's very difficult to determine exactly because of what speed is it traveling now and how long would it take to get here. Just in some rough calculations that we did, we see it to come around 2017, closer to 2018. But there again, this is one of the reasons why there's a huge window of the time frame originally, 2013 to 2020. And you also got to keep in mind, biblically speaking, your two witnesses still have to come. The events that follow uh, the planet X seem to fall more in line with judgment after the death of the two witnesses. It's one of the things that we lean to as well. So... Try not to be too nervous as we prepare this report. We'll be looking at this very objectively, uh, but very seriously as well. And hopefully we'll be interviewing uh, not only Bob Fletcher, but as well Gil Brassard as well. Now, we are uh, looking at another news broadcast tonight of something that appeared on RT News, and then we delved uh, much deeper into this story. And we entitled it, United States is Serious About a War with Russia. And that's very much true. And you're going to find out that Russia, although they're trying to avert a war with the United States, they're also getting very tired of what they're going through as a result of the U.S.'s pressure on them. Let's take a look at a little bit about this. RT News reported on today on January 26, 2016, Lavrov policy of a restraining Russia continues. High time to drop it, he states there. Uh, in the article here, he states also, the U.S. and the EU are still pursuing a dangerous policy of restraining Russia, including the NATO military buildup near its borders. That's the Russian borders, that is. Russian Foreign Ministry Sergei Lavrov has said, adding that Moscow is ready to cooperate on an equal and mutually beneficial basis. Now, you're going to find out as we go through this investigative report, what he's speaking about there is that the United States is just trying to take all the natural resources of the world, gathering the lands for themselves as it is written in the Humane Gospel. Something I find very interesting, uh, at least if you take it of nothing less than a biblical prophetic uh, prophecy, that is. But anyhow, it states here that... Uh, they want it to be beneficial, uh, mutually beneficial basis. And Russia, having a deal signed with uh, uh, Bashar al-Assad for Syria, it's imperative that Russia not lose this, uh, or that Russia does not allow Bashar al-Assad to step aside, or if at least if there's another one that takes his place, that they are in favor of Russia. Otherwise, the United States would get full control of all the oil uh, and gas in the Middle East completely. The policy, he says here, of restraining Russia uh, uh, continues, though it is high time to drop this policy and file it in the historical archives, Lavrov told a media briefing in Moscow. Sounds like to me that he's trying to give a one last opportunity to drop this before we end up into an all-out war in the Middle East that could easily spiral out of control and even be upon U.S. soil. Uh, says uh, also in the same article, our Western colleagues say sometimes that there will be no more business as usual with Russia. And I'm confident that statement is absolutely correct, Lavrov, Lavrov sta stated as well there. 
and he went on to elaborate a little bit more, he knows that there's never going to be the same relation that Russia once had with the United States after the Cold War. That's very obvious as well. There's been prophecies about Russia, the communism, being reestablished once again. Very interesting what we're going to see in the coming days here. Continue on in the article, it says, Western countries are still trying to occur one-sided benefits, even attempting to punish us for conducting an independent international policy, Lavrov said. Of course, we take that into account in our actions, but that's not our choice. That seems to be very much leaning towards war, if you ask me, just from that observation. As he said, it's not our choice. So he's letting you know, building a case, even as Putin has built the case quite, uh, in fact, quite eloquently over the last few months. And what's also interesting is that we're seeing less and less of Putin speaking out, but more and more the foreign minister Lavrov. NATO, he says, built up near Russia's border is short-sighted. The Russian foreign minister said that added that Moscow would keep an eye on the concentration of military potential in neighboring countries. It is becoming a major issue for Russia. Not only, though, is it on that border there, but also in the Middle East as well. It's another place Lavrov had concern with. Now we see the counterproductive and dangerous policy in relations with Russia, including the buildup of NATO's military potential near our borders and the creation of global European Asian segments of a global U.S. missile defense, Lavrov said. Well, we know that the United States is doing uh, war games there with Japan in the sea there. We also know that uh, it is being, and, and from what it seems like, that uh, Foreign Minister Lavrov, Sergei Lavrov, implicated the possibility that the U.S. will use North Korea uh, using or testing a so-called nuclear weapon or even bigger, a hydrogen weapon, but they're accusing uh, uh, North Korea of this, and Russia seems to indicate that perhaps this is not what really happened, but it is only justifying this case in order to be able to put nuclear weapons in South Korea, something that Lavrov said cannot happen and will not be accepted in the region there. As we can see, it looks like the young man here, the uh, Kim Jong-un uh, here, looks more like a video game player, if you ask me. It says on here also in the same article, Moscow is not sure that Pyongyang tested a thermonuclear device on January 6th. It was uh, actually a thermonuclear test that would mean that the UN resolution introduced stiff, stiff, excuse me, stiff restrictions on supply of nuclear materials to North Korea is not working that Pyongyang is still managing to acquire what it needs for its military nuclear program, Lavrov said. So, anyway, so with all these different issues that we see reported here in RT News, what else is going on? It's going to surprise you. It's already been reported on different media outlets here just in the last few days and uh, even the last week or so. There is a military buildup on Syria's northern border there. Russia, as well as the United States, both building military bases in Syria. And they're not very far from each other. In fact, the U.S., their military base that they're building will also be able to launch attack helicopters. Turkey is concerned that Russia plans to invade, and they're preparing by sending tanks and troops on their own border as Russia begins to strengthen up. In today's Zaman, uh, on uh, todayszaman.com on January 22nd, 2016, Turkish authorities reported having intelligence should, suggesting that Russia might be preparing to establish an air base close to Turkey's border with Syria, a step likely to deepen tensions that flared between the two countries after Turkish warplanes downed a Russian fighter jet in November last year, according to a report. A Russian delegation led by Lieutenant General flew to the northern Syrian town of uh, Kamishli, right across the border from Nusaybin in southeastern Turkey on January the 16th. A news report published in the Hariyat Daily, uh, Daily said, quoting unnamed security sources. And... Uh, by the way, looking at that on the map, it is extremely close there. As you see here, Turkey has uh, uh, tanks, their, their, their type tanks there on the border. This is an older photo, by the way, but this was reported in today's Zaman continued on the same article. Turkish sources suspected that delegations visit as a part of Russian plans to renovate the airport in town so that it can be turned into a base 
uh, for warplanes and military cargo planes. This would also in, uh, entail the installation of radars that would be able to closely monitor Turkish military activities in the area. After reports that Russia d uh, deployed troops to YPG-controlled Kashmili, the Turkish military reinforced the Syrian border with additional tanks and armored vehicles as it has, uh, has started to dig trenches on the border as a security measure. They've also been reported in other reports there that Turkey has been clearing the land minefields in order to be able to invade into Syria. Now this is something that they didn't report in this article here. Another reason why Russia is concerned because Syria, uh, Turkey is preparing an offensive against the Kurdish uh, fighters against ISIS in Syria. Very serious issue to say the very least there, and not to mention as well, it is basically on the border of genocide that Turkey is doing to the Kurdish population in its southern borders there. They have uh, prohibited many journalists from going into this particular area as well. And as we have stated in another report, it is unbelievable why Turkey is actually uh, doing all this to the Kurds, and yet the United States stands by and allies with Turkey when at one time Turkey uh, excuse me, uh, the United States was allied to the Kurds. Why the sudden change? Well, I guess the Kurds have nothing to offer the United States this time around. So they're no longer a credible ally at this point. And by the way, it's the Turks stealing the oil and Maybe the U.S. is benefiting from this as well. Hard to say exactly what's going on. To give you a little idea from the map, though, uh, this is on USA, uh, excuse me, uh, South, southfront.org, December 19, 2015, USA builds air base in the Kurdish region in Syria. I uh, don't know how well you guys can actually see this map here, but if you see the green section, the round uh, circle with the arrow, this is where the U.S. base is being built. But just northwest there, not too far away, I would say probably just if I were to guesstimate, no more than maybe about 70 kilometers is where Russia is building their air base. Anyway, the article states the U.S. wants to build an air base at the abandoned airport in Syrian Kurdish region, uh, Haska. The site is to be massively expanded and modernized for this purpose. So far, a runway has been built with length of 2.5 kilometer, kilometers, I-24 News reported. The U.S. wants to use the new base to be quickly able to intervene militarily and to provide their allies with uh, supplies. Russia, on the other hand, has an air base in the region of Latakia. Uh, U.S. Secretary of uh, 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 Secretary of Defense Ashton Carter announced last week wanting to establish an expedition group to carry out the special operations in Iraq and Syria. Um, this was also, by the way, reported on the globalresearch.ca. It's going to be a lot of tensions, to say the least there, and this is one of the reasons why I say we're on the verge not to, uh, of seeing a war between uh, one, Russia and Turkey, and then of course the United States will intervene for on Turkey's behalf. Um, anyway, another article here on January the 23rd, on, in, this was on, on InfoWars by Kurt uh, Nemo. It says, conflict in Syria escalates as Russia and U.S. establish an air base along Turkish border. Just more news about this uh, air base that Russia has built as well as the U.S. building. Uh, in the article here, he says, Russia and Turkey are preparing for a military confrontation along Syria's border with Turkey. According to intelligence sources of the United States, Russia has dispatched engineers to the northeastern city of Kamishli on the border in late October, according to Syria Direct. The Kashmili International Airport was closed to civilian air traffic and turned over to the Syrian military. On Friday, the London-based Syrian Observatory for Human Rights quoted sources in Syria uh, as saying 200 Russian personnel were fortified the airfield in Kamashli and ready, uh, readied it for military aircraft. Now, same article here on InfoWars continues on. Also on Friday, the Australian reported the U.S. has established a secret air base 30 miles outside of Kashmili. Well, I was a little off on my uh, suggestion there, about 70 miles there, 30 miles, a heck of a lot closer there. Uh, very easy within striking distance for the United States. Uh, Syria activists reported several dozen U.S. military personnel are busy setting up a base at the former agricultural airfield a few miles from the Iraqi-Kurdish borders. Do you think that perhaps the U.S. has gotten President Bashar al-Assad's approval for doing this base in his country? I highly doubt it. 
Anyway, the airfield has been reconstructed and now has an airstrip for the American helicopters and a commander cent command center. Abu Jad uh, Haswaki, a Syrian activist based in the nearby town of Hashka, told the newspaper. So, um, another issue here I wanted to bring to your attention here. Syria signs offshore uh, oil and gas exploration deal with Russia. We cannot forget the reason why Russia came to Syria in the first place. This is one of the reasons why you saw in the article with uh, defense, excuse me, with um, uh, the Minister Lavrov, Sergei Lavrov, where he states that Russia's interests must be taken into consideration equally along with the United States' interest. Well, Russia signed a gas deal with the Syrian people. This was reported on December the 25th, 2013. And even though they have signed this deal, and once it was formalized, this was in another article we shared with you just recently, Russia within one month's time had a military base set up there to do what? To protect their particular oil company. Because by the way, it is a state-run oil company that Russia has doing the exploration drilling off the coast of Syria. So it is a strategic interest for Russia. Not to mention, don't forget the Dead Sea. In fact, there was a prophecy as well that the Dead Sea, there would be a huge oil reserve that would be discovered that would last for 500 years. That much oil reserve. There's some very wealthy Israelis that did find oil near the Dead Sea. But according to one of the articles, which I didn't post on here, saving it actually for another uh, broadcast, that the gentleman that is the, the Jewish man that is actually doing the oil drilling there, they discovered oil near the Dead Sea, but chose not to bring it out because of the low oil prices. This was just discovered in the last year. Now, it gets a little bit more interesting though, and something else that happened just recently here, and that is the Saudi prince. One of the Saudi princes there uh, offers Russia a deal to drop Syria. In the article here on the Telegraph on the 26th, again today, Saudis offer Russia a secret oil deal if it drops Syria. The article states Saudi Arabia has secretly offered Russia a sweeping deal to control the global ore market and safeguard Russia's gas contracts if the Kremlin backs away from the Assad regime in Syria. Prince Bandar, head of Saudi intelligence, allegedly confronted the Kremlin with a mix of inducements and threats in a bid to break the deadlock over Syria. Looks like the United States has got a hand in this, which the article does identify as well. We'll bring that out in a moment. He said, let us examine how to put together a unified Russia-Saudi strategy on the subject of oil. The aim is to agree on the price of oil and production quantities that keep the price stable in a global oil markets. He said that the four-hour meeting with Mr. Putin, they met Mr. Putin's Dhaka outside Moscow three weeks ago. All right. Goes on in the article, we understand Russia's great interest in the oil and gas in the Mediterranean from Israel to Cyprus. And we understand the importance of the Russian gas pipeline to Europe. We are not interested in competing with that. We can operate in this area, he said, purporting to speak with the full backing of the U.S. And that's kind of interesting because the United States also knows that Russia has signed a deal back in January of 2014 with Mahmoud Abbas of the Palestinians. As it is, there's already a quote-unquote Palestinian state. And of course, Russia has those drilling rights with the Palestinians, as well as off of the shore or off the coast of Gaza. Where is Israel going to end up in all of this? Looks like Israel is going to be kicked out. In fact, if there is that big of an oil supply found in the Dead Sea area, that's in the West Bank as well. Again, where does Israel fit into all of this to begin with? The whole world is warring over Israel. And the time is coming rapidly. All the nations will gather against Israel, maybe because of that 500-year supply prophecy of oil reserves right near the Dead Sea. It's not at the Dead Sea, but near it. Well, pretty much everything near the Dead Sea is in the West Bank. I wonder why Israel fights so hard to 
try to keep this region. They have a right to it to begin with, biblically. Remember, the Jordanians annexed the West Bank in 1950. Totally illegal to do because it was already, by the British mandate, given to the Jewish people as a homeland. Both everything that is called the West Bank as well as even territory that Jordan is under Jordanian control today east of the Jordan. All this land has been stolen. Of course, in the War of Independence, they took it from Israel. The international community, though, never sided with Israel. They sided with the Palestinians. And of course, why? Because the Vatican knows that they get more leverage with the Muslims. They're easier to buy out, that is. So things are going to really heat up in the very near future. Will Russia take this deal? And what's very interesting, another thing I didn't put in the article here tonight, is that Russia actually has been stated in a recent article about allowing Bashar al-Assad to seek asylum. Is that because he's considering taking the deal that the Saudis are proposing with U.S. backing? Only time will tell in the very near future. Or is Russia going to at least take retaliation on Turkey for what it did to Russia? Don't really know. Anyway, we'll watch and see just how this plays out. In fact, our broadcast on Planet X will be going into these things as well. It may surprise you what another possibility lies with about the fight for this territory. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.